Good afternoon and welcome to the pre-prac video for the oscillator prac, the LRC. What we're going to investigate today is the response of oscillators. And to give an introduction to this, I'm first going to discuss a mechanical oscillator and then talk about an electrical oscillator, which of course is the one that you'll be looking at. Now, in the case of the mechanical oscillator, we're going to look at just a simple pendulum, which is a pendulum like this one with which you're familiar. If I give this thing a disturbance like that, we know it'll oscillate at some resonant frequency, some natural frequency, this thing. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to drive this oscillator by means of a, a mechanical device. We're going to drive this oscillating point backwards and forwards over some range of frequencies. And then we're going to have a look to see at these various frequencies what the response is going to be of this oscillator. I've used the symbol A here for amplitude and you'll see in a little while why I've done that. Now remember that every oscillator has some natural frequency and in the case of this pendulum it'll be that frequency and let's show that natural frequency by means of some center line over here and I'm going to denote that by F0. That's the natural frequency. I'm first going to drive it at some low frequency and have a look at the response, then increase, increase, and to see what the whole range of responses will be. Let's have a look. First of all, at some very low re response. There you can see I'm driving by means of this machine, I'm driving the pivot point backwards and forwards really slowly, well below the resonant frequency and we see here that the response, the oscillation is quite small. So at a low frequency the response is small, some number let's say about there. Now I'm going to drive the thing faster and faster and faster and I'm going to go quite quickly to the resonant frequency. You'll see that when I drive this thing at its resonant frequency, the amplitude, the response is very big. Somewhere up here. And now when I go beyond that point to some frequency much higher, let's go there, some much higher frequency up here somewhere, you see once again the amplitude, the response of the oscillator is low again. Somewhere down there. Now, when we plot all of these carefully, we'll see that the response will look something like this. It'll first, the response increases until it gets the resonant frequency, and then the response falls off again. And we see that this pattern is the same for all kinds of oscillators, not just mechanical oscillators. Let me just point out one more thing to you, and that is that the amplitude we were talking about here was the amount of swinging that took place. And what was happening here is that there's energy being transferred. What is happening is in one case, this potential energy, as this thing gets some height energy, this potential energy, that gets converted to kinetic energy, back to potential, kinetic, back to potential. In other words, energy is being passed backwards and forwards from one state to other. Now, Let's have a look at the electrical oscillator that we're going to be doing today. There's an inductance, a capacitor, and a resistance in the circuit. And in this case, we're going to be driving the circuit by means of this function generator. An important property of an inductance and a capacitance is this. The inductance is able to build up a magnetic field when there's a current through the inductor. And the capacitor is able to build up and electric field when there's a voltage across the capacitor. So I've got a magnetic field here and I've got an electric field there. And what is happening in this oscillator is that the energy is being transferred backwards and forwards from the magnetic field into the electric field, from the electric field back into the magnetic field. So this oscillation, although we can't see it, is exactly the same way as an oscillation of a mechanical device like that. So I'm going to drive the circuit and the easy way to connect that of course is to connect straight through to the function generator. So I'm going to connect, first of all, I'm going to connect this wire here which is from the earth side of the function generator to the resistor. So from the earth side of the function generator to the resistor 
and the other wire I'm going to connect from the other side of the function generator, the red connection, around to the inductance. I'm going to measure the voltage across this resistance and the reason for doing that is this that as this energy is oscillating backwards and forwards between the magnetic field and the electric field it does so with the current that's flowing in the circuit in other words as the when the current gets high this field builds up as the current drops off so that field builds up and in order to measure the current I, I can measure the voltage across this resistance using Ohm's law I can determine what the current is if I know what the current is I know what the response is of this thing so a high current implies that there's a big response a small current flowing in the circuit means that there's a small response in the circuit to measure that voltage I'm going to use the oscilloscope so as before I'm going to connect the earth side of the oscilloscope to the earth side of the circuit and I'm going to connect in this case channel 1 to the resistor. Now I'm going to drive the circuit by means of the function generator and I've started off with some low frequency and I can have a look on the oscilloscope here and I can see some very small response, some very low frequency. But as I increase the frequency, you will see I'm getting more and more of a response. In other words, a bigger voltage, that means that there's a bigger current in the circuit. And as I approach the, uh, as I approach the resonant frequency of this LC circuit, you can see that response is bigger and bigger and bigger until I get to some frequency at which the response is a maximum. Now if I go beyond that point, in other words a higher frequency, some frequency beyond here, you can see that the current falls off which means that the response of the oscillator is becoming less and less and less. In the PRAC you're going to have to record the, the response you get, in other words the voltages, for some range of frequencies. Once you've got that you'll do a graph of the response curve and then analysis of that curve. Thank you.